Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I am Dr. Naharu Maivi Haider Chaudhary, Assistant Professor, PGT Cardiology Department of National Heart Foundation. It's an honor and uh, privilege for me to present in front of this August gathering in person and in virtual. The topic of my presentation is coronary sinus type of ASD, an unusual variant of interatrial communication. Uh, I am going to three consecutive cases. My first case, 27-year-old female who was symptomatic and physically reveals normal finding. And ECG was normal axis uh, with incomplete RBV. Before exploration of the echo of my patient, just I want to share the anatomy of the coronary sinus because it is very important. The coronary sinus, which is uh, located in the coronary sulcus in the posterior atrioventricular group, it is true from the floor of the left atrium and it opens into the right atrium beside the uh, septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve and medial to the inferior vena cava. In sagittal plane, it looks like a uh, circular structure. So in uh, flex view, it is a patient where the, uh, it was a normal finding to circular structure. This is a small a structure, circular, which is coronary sinus. And this is for descending thoracic aorta. And this is my case, where the coronary sinus is hugely dilated. And uh, this is the modified four chamber view where it uh, seems the coronary sinus, the roof forming the floor of the left atrium, which open to the right atrium near the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve. And this is my case. If uh, we see that there is a small ASD secundum, which is causing the significant right-sided chamber dilatation. So I am in dilemma. Is this the small ASD causing this significant chamber dilatation? So I was searching and I was trying to find any missing septal defect or unusual communication at the atrial level. And I am fortunate that I got my answer. There is a communication between the coronary sinus and the left atrium. And uh, there is a, uh, another finding that left-sided upper pulmonary vein, which is draining into the coronary sinus, rather the left atrium. And there is a shunt between the left atrium and the coronary sinus with left to right shunt. And there is the uh, 2D gap in the coronary sinus in the proximal portion. And this is the transesophageal echo where it showed that the small ASD is second term with left to right shunt. So we do the CT angiogram of this patient and we find there is a communication which confirmed by the CT, left atrium and coronary sinus and left-sided pulmonary vein which drain to the coronary sinus. And this is the three, three reconstructed uh, CT angiogram where we suggested the same finding with the communication between the coronary sinus and left atrium. So we took the patient to the OR and uh, we, uh, the surgeon also confirmed this is the coronary sinus if we compare with the pictorial and this is the in IVC and this is the SVC and this the vent is passing through the PFO to the left atrium. So surgeon has directly closed the AST and rerouted of the left pulmonary vein into the left atrium by diverting coronary sinus root to the left atrium. So this is the post-operative echo where there is no residual shunt and this patient was in follow-up and maintaining well. My second case is three year, seven month asymptomatic child who was uh, diagnosed during routine evaluation of the respiratory tract infection, having right atrial enlargement with mild increased pulmonary blood flow. And this is the patient also very much suspicious having only PFO with left to right shunt, but the right atrium is significantly enlarged. So there also I am finding something missing and we got that here coronary sinus is dilated and if we see the coronary sinus, the proximal portion is unroofed. And this is the left to right shunt between the coronary sinus and left atrium. So in this case also we operated and this is the coronary sinus where surgeon has put and closed this ASD with patch closer and that PFO is directly closed. And this is my third and last case, seven year symptomatic patient having ejection systolic murmur. And here also we uh, got the coronary sinus is dilated and there is unroofing of the proximal portion and he usually dilated right-sided chamber. And we found here also that uh, with left to right shunt and anomalous left-sided upper pulmonary venous trainees. And we do the 3D echo here. And in 3D also it confirmed that there is a proximal unroofing of the coronary sinus with left atrium. This patient also have the prolapse of mitral valve with significant MR, mild MR, and this patient has large ASD secondum, additional large ASD secondum. 
So coronary sinus type of ASD is the unroofing partial or complete defect between the coronary sinus and the left atrium. And it is very rare, less than 1% of all uh, ASD and associated with persistent LSBC, anomalous pulmonary venous return, cotritum, tetralogy of fallot, and atrioventricular septal defect. So why diagnosis is important? To prevent pulmonary hypertension, brain abscess, and cerebral emboli. So take home message is coronary sinus ASD is extremely rare congenital heart disease. It is less than 0.1%. And transthoracic and transesophageal echo is considered a very useful tool to detect a coronary sinus type of ASD. We must be suspicious. A small defect cannot produce so much of hemodynamics. And one congenital Genital anomaly can be associated with other congenital defects. So we have to be, we have become indispensable imaging tool and surgical treatment is mandatory to prevent the complication. So thank you all for being with me. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Naharuma Albi Haider Jodhuri, ma'am, for your brilliant presentation. Yes, sir. So, both of you are all lucky. Thank yes, you sir. very much. Thank you. Very much. Sir, the message is uh, we have to be very cautious because if we don't look for that uh, coronary sinus that is dilated, we we also miss that. And also, lucky that you have covered this by the shooting of the book for your <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs>